Socrates Streams, and I am your host, Socrates. Unfortunately, I'm not coming at you live today because I did have some technical difficulties with the stream. I really don't know what's going on. I've had a world of trouble getting figured out how to get that stream up and running properly since the new update has come through with YouTube. I have spent countless hours trying to um, get everything sorted and as soon as I think that I've got a workable solution something else uh, pops up and causes some major issues so basically had to stop the stream today about 10 minutes in because nobody um, I was cutting in and out and it was really hard for people to follow along so instead what I'm going to do is just do a pre-recording and we'll upload that to YouTube Hopefully, I can get uh, a workable solution figured out for the live streaming because I really do like to interact with the chat and uh, set up everything live so that people can see the analysis in real time opposed to record a recorded version. Uh, but until then, I will do my best to just um, get a quick recording up and going so that you guys are able to um, get some of my analysis even if... I am still having trouble with the live streaming, which I clearly am. So we're starting out with the uh, time target for my long-term price projection of um, Bitcoin for this upcoming bull market. Yesterday, I made an error and um, wrote down... Uh, 2021 when the calculation clearly should have been for 2023. So I want to walk through with you guys exactly what the uh, issue was, what I was thinking, and the solution that I came to. So there are a couple different ways, there are a number of different ways that um, somebody could go about measuring a time target. And yesterday I was... Um, looking at two different options, really liking both, and then got confused when I uh, went ahead and uploaded the chart. So the chart that I uploaded was based on the time between peaks of the prior bubble cycles. So we've got these peaks from uh, 2011 to 2013 and then 2013 to 2017. And the peaks between uh, the time that it takes between those peaks is what I was looking at for how long it could take between here and the next peak. So essentially what we had was uh, right here was June 11th to November 13th was uh, looks like a little under two years, excuse me, a little over two years. And then from here, uh, December 13th to December 17th, that was about four years. So essentially, the time that this took, this took about one and a half times longer than this one. So I multiplied um, one and a half times this duration, which essentially gave us about six years, and looked to add it to the top, um, to where this peaked in 2017, and that should have given us a target of 2023. I wrote down 2021, and that was definitely a mistake, uh, but it was coming from somewhere else. And essentially what I was looking at was a fractal from here up to here. If we use this as a fractal, um, then that will give us uh, somewhere in 2021 as the target for the next peak. And both of those um, have a lot of validity. I really like using both methods. And when both come in so far apart, that is an area where I want to potentially analyze further and see if there's some sort of happy medium that can be found. Um, I when I have two very realistic price targets, um, I generally like to try to look for somewhere in the middle. If another method can 
uh, give me a price target somewhere in the middle of the two original ones that I had, then I am almost certainly going to take that. Um, but I'm not going to just say, oh man, these things are two years apart, so let's just cut them down the middle and, and call it a day somewhere in uh, 2022. That isn't how I'm going to prefer to do it. Instead, I'm going to look towards other methods to see what they are saying and if I have another viable calculation that gives me a projection somewhere in the middle of the two that I was originally looking at well then I am going to use that just because it's the it's the happy medium it's the best of both worlds and if that one is wrong um, it should be less wrong than if the other two are wrong, if, if that makes sense. So what I asked myself is, what is the most important factor in regards to where the price peaks? And that's when I thought that, as a matter of fact, what is most important is the time following the Bitcoin having date. How many, how many days after the having date does it take for the price to peak? And is there potentially a relationship that we can use to project a target for the current environment? And that's what I looked at uh, right here. We have uh, almost exactly a year that the price peaked after the halving, about one year and six days after the halving, the price peaked. And this following halving in uh, 2016, the price peaked 525 days after the halving, which is what we'd expect. It should take longer and it should be less significant in terms of the ROI as the adoption curve starts to flatten out and get away from this super parabolic area. So what we do then is divide 525 divided by 371. That gives us 1.41. So we multiply that times 525. That gives us 742. So we do 742 days after the halving, the, and the projected halving date for Bitcoin right now is in May of 2020. So we can add 742 days from that. And what we end up with is a time in May of 2022, uh, excuse me, 2022 and that was just a little bit off so I'm going to make sure that we have that in May one second April May almost getting there that should do it I would sure think okay so 742 days after the projected having date gives us a time target of May 2022 still using the same uh, method to calculate the price target so that has not changed and uh, the one thing that I do need to adjust now is essentially this fractal uh, because if I am to get it to go all the way to the top of this channel, it gets beyond that price. So essentially, that's why I was really liking the 2021 target is because it lined up with the top of this channel and the price almost perfectly. Um, so that is why I think I left on the 2021 and and I still do really like that, but since I've got another method showing that the target could potentially be two full years after this, and I've got another target that is a bit of a happy medium of the two, I am just going to go with that happy medium because uh, it will be the, um, it may not provide the precise precision of 
Uh, this right here with us getting right to the top of the channel and right at the exact price, um, but it will take into account much more information and when there is more information available, we generally want to take all that into account and come to some sort of average or uh, compromise. And that is why I am going with the May 2022 target. Now what I have to figure out, I mean, you don't, just because you have a target, you don't need a fractal to fit perfectly. That's um, almost asking a little bit too much, but that's kind of how I am is, I do try to do uh, give my my mind as good of a picture in regards to what I'm expecting to see that can really help me um, just to prepare mentally, essentially. So what I would be looking at is uh, maybe making adjustments to the top end of this channel. Um, so that we would still be able to come to the top of it. There's a number of things that you can look at doing there. It, it doesn't even have to return to the top of the channel. Um, so maybe we just leave it like it is. Uh, but that's something that I will be looking at. I, I really liked how the fractal lined up perfectly. Um, but I prefer this 2022 target because it is taking into account all of the information that I have available and coming to a compromise that satisfies me. Uh, so for anybody that is interested in trying out uh, these fractals for themselves, here's how you do it. Right here, you go into the bars pattern on TradingView, second one under the text um, first one above the arrow, go to bars pattern. And then what you do is basically just decide where do I want to start this thing? We'll maybe start it right in here. And where do we want to end it? Since we're looking at the next all time high, we will end it at the all time high. And then you can come over and put that in there just to see how it lines up. And if it doesn't line up how you're wanting, you can just kind of go ahead and adjust the uh, area that you're looking at, um, or you can even just go ahead and do something like this. So the point isn't to identify areas to enter or exit with these bars pattern as far as I'm concerned. The point is to help your mind visualize the uh, how Bitcoin has tended to move throughout its history. And that really helps me to visualize what could be coming up. It doesn't tell me that, oh, if this happens right here, I'm going to be selling. And if this happens right here, I'm going to be buying. That, that's not what this is for. I um, mean, then one other thing to think about is that potentially the longer the price continues to rally following the halving, the more room there is to rally above this target. Uh, this target is based on uh, these mathematical prior cycles, uh, but there is certainly an argument to be said that if we get to 150,000 and we are not up to the top of the channel, then perhaps we will be um, continuing on higher. So for example, remember when the time target was 2021, we had the price kind of coming to the top of this channel at $150,000 or so. But look, as we get further and further out, the top of this channel continues to go up and up and up and up and up. Oops, didn't want to do that. Uh, so if we are continuing to rally into 2023, which could very well be possible, and we haven't reached the top of this channel, then potentially we could be in for a much higher target than this 151. Uh, 
based on how the top of this channel continues to accelerate to the upside the longer that time goes on. And there is a very good argument to be made that we will return to the top of this channel regardless of what price that is at. And that the shorter, the sooner that happens, the less significant the appreciation in the following cycle would be. Okay. That's everything I had for you guys there. Now I just want to quickly go ahead and analyze the recent price action to see uh, what we uh, have been seeing just over the last 24 hours because it has been very important. Yesterday you may remember me saying that just a four or a five hundred dollar move in the price of Bitcoin would be very significant. And the reason why I said that is because we had horizontal and we had this, we had a number of things, uh, but we had the bear flag that was um, working until we really, this was the end, it really needed to resist right there for me to con consider that bear flag as still valid. It can't get too far out, um, it can't be too wide in relation to the pull. For example, if the pull is like this long and then the flag is getting almost equally as long, that is no longer a bear flag um, and it's maybe turning into some sort of U or, or V um, bottom. So the bear flag is no longer intact, but what is fascinating is what we see with this trend line that I was looking at. I was originally thinking that uh, it would be coming in around 10,900, but we got there quicker than I thought. Excuse me. Uh, and we are up at around 10,950 is where that trend line was waiting for a throwback. Yesterday we talked about why I am drawing this trend line how I am and uh, here I was watching very very closely as yesterday was rallying up towards 11,000 to see if we were going to be able to break through my key areas of resistance. I had this horizontal drawn and then I was looking at a throwback to this trend line as a potential way that the price would progress before continuing to the downside. And it's amazing how well uh, that came in. I mean it was almost perfectly. It was really spooky how the price threw right back up to the trend line and then pulled back down. So now we will be looking at this trend line here to see if that can hold. If that holds then we could, it would sure look like we're going to go ahead and get back above this trend line. If this doesn't hold, then we should continue the correction to the downside as far as I can tell. The most important thing to me is the 50 and 200 EMAs on the 4-hour chart as it stands right now. Uh, the longer, if, if we are able to maintain support above this bull trend line, then we should be able to recross these moving averages bullish, which would stop me out of my short position. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, if we do break down this trend line here, then we could be in for a sharp reaction to the downside and a retest of uh, 98 at a minimum, uh, probably continue on down from there. 
So if I had to guess, I would say that this trend line here is going to break because this one is on a higher time frame, uh, a much higher time frame. So this is much more powerful. And now that we're below it, it is resistance. Uh, so the more powerful trend line is resistance, the less powerful trend line is support. We still are in a bear market based on these moving average crossovers. So therefore, um, I am inclined to believe that bearish continuation is the most likely. I mean, it is too early. It really doesn't matter what I think is going to happen. What matters is what does happen. Um, is this Does this break down or does it not? That, that's all that really matters. Uh, so make sure that when I'm saying what I think that you're not then um, using that to act preemptively. Um, always act on your own volition and on your own ideas. Uh, but if I'm saying that I think this is going to break down, it, it, it's irrelevant because it hasn't broken down yet. And I'm just uh, giving you some, uh, like a glimpse into my mind in terms of how I think about the markets. And when I'm looking at this action right here, what's going on in my mind? That That's all that I'm trying to portray. Uh, so the final reason why I think that this trend line would break down is because the SAR has already broken down. Um, often the SAR will be in line with a boundary, kind of like we see here. This whole time it was in line with the boundary. Um, and then sometimes uh, when the SARs are in the same direction for a prolonged period of time, they're going to start accelerating towards the price. And when they accelerate towards the price and move inside of a boundary, that's something I pay very close attention to as a leading indicator. So when this SAR broke right here, that told me that this trend line should follow. It hasn't yet, so take that for, well, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, but if anything, I am expecting this to break down. And if we do fall below 10,600, then we should get a sharp reaction uh, down to like the 9,800 area or so. If that doesn't happen, if we continue supporting this trend line and we go ahead and break through this bearish parabolic SAR, well, that would tell me to watch out for this thing um, breaking uh, the trend line right here that did resist on the throwback. If we can break through the bearish parabolic SAR, that would suggest that this should break down next. So definitely paying very close attention. I will be expecting significant moves to come. If we do break above 11,000, then I'm absolutely going to be wanting to get out of my short positions. Uh, that is the pretty much do or die zone for me. If we're back above 11K, then we are in a pretty darn bullish um, position as far as I could tell. Um, so I would definitely be interested in a stop loss at the $11,000 area. Uh, but as it stands, I'm feeling fairly comfortable holding on to my short position. It is underwater, but I am still um, I'm in a position where that could turn around very quickly. If this breaks down and we fail to get the golden cross from the 50 and 200 EMAs, then I would expect my position to start showing a profit uh, fairly soon after that. So that is basically everything that I had for today. I wanted to thank everybody for uh, the tips that have been sent in. It's been just really cool to uh, see the support and the um, the kind words and the, the likes and the tips that you guys have been uh, sending in. That's just been really, really cool and has, has absolutely meant a lot to me. I have an... Um, a wallet set up that will make a noise every time that a transfer comes in and that gets definitely puts a smile on my face every time regardless of the amount it's just really neat to um, hear that 
uh, hear that sound and, and know that somebody out there uh, valued the work that I have been doing. So I, I really do appreciate the support that everybody has shown. I do apologize for the difficulties with the live stream. Hopefully I will be able to figure it out sooner rather than later. I can tell you it's been uh, definitely a nightmare and there's been a number of people um, reaching out and offering to help. I, I am very, very grateful for that. I will probably be taking uh, somebody or multiple people up on that offer um, because I am playing a game of whack-a-mole myself and it is getting very frustrating. So thank you guys for your patience. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, there will be some growing pains, uh, some kinks to iron out as I am getting up and running. Um, so your patience is tremendously appreciated and I will be doing my best to uh, get everything up and going in a um, at least a workable manner here as soon as possible and until then I may just have to do some pre-recorded videos so uh, thank you guys for tuning in we will plan on catching up with you later <laughs>